Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Married at First Sight, Season 17, Episode 13. If you are new here, then welcome. I give lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we're going to get into it. Four days until Michael and Chloe's wedding. So, Chloe is just telling us in her little, you know, cam that she's excited and she's hopeful. Huh. <sighs> Good luck, girly. Becca and Austin. So they're going to build a exotic arbitrarium or something like that, child. I don't know. They were going to do something where they build little mini greenhouses or something like that. I don't know. It was giving nothing. Austin says that Becca is a sex fixin'. So he wanted to give her, her those little adult trinkets. I'm sorry, y'all. But nothing about pink says sex kitten to me. Now, she may want to get it on, but I don't see sex kitten. I don't get, I don't get that from her. <laughs> I just don't get it. So they're sitting down. They're building these things. They start talking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. Honey, shout out to Salt and Pepper. So they're talking and she says that she's sex positive and she enjoys what her partner enjoys because, you know, they were talking about the sex of it all. So then she asked him, how often does he expect sex to happen in an ideal marriage? He said, you know, once a day or every few days. I think Austin doesn't want to get intimate in case he can't say yes on decision day. That is what I think. And I think some other things based on this conversation that they had. Because as they're talking about the sex, he starts to talk about pegging. And I said, say what now? There's no reason. And baby, she wasn't opposed to it, okay? Moving forward. Then we see Cameron and he's telling us about the procedure that he's about to have. He said he really doesn't want to reach out to Claire. He just wants to leave her out of it. This is something that he has to go through alone. Now, I am very sorry that he has to go through these things, especially health wise, because I know that has to be scary. But for me, something about Cameron gives manipulative. It's just the way that he omits things. But I do wish nothing but a successful surgery. I hope everything went well and I hope that he makes it out. Emily and Brennan. So child, it's another tension filled day in the shared apartment. So he's asking her how she felt about last night. You know, when he was about to pass out in the hot tub. And she was like, I mean, I didn't feel like you were going to faint. And I just snapped because, I mean, you won't answer any questions and your actions make me feel bad. So he was like, well, you know, I'm sorry. I'm going to work on my delivery. It's going to get better. Yeah, right. I only believe that you're saying that to not look like a douche on national TV. And you ain't fooling me. You keep doing the exact same thing. Then you turn right back around the next day and apologize for it. It's giving emotional abuse. You cannot keep doing the same things. The definition of insanity is repeating the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And Brennan, that is what you like to do. So they sit around, they kind of squash things and they write letters to their younger selves. So she reads hers first. She spoke to her high school self and how her dad pushed her and it made her who she is today. He reads his to his teenage self. So he talks about how he shouldn't be in a rush to grow up and not be too hard on himself and things like that. So then Brennan tells her that at 13, while everybody else was out being teenagers and having a good time, he was getting advice from his friend's dad. Now, what stuck out to me is both of his parents were in the home. So I'm wondering why he didn't get advice from his own daddy. But he said that he was getting mentorship from one of his friend's dads. He said that he wished that he would have spent more time being a kid and that may explain his childish response to things that he doesn't like. His emotional maturity is stunted. Now, I am nobody's psychiatrist, psychologist. I'm no ist. Okay, I'm not. But when he said that, a light bulb went off in my head. I said, you know what? That may explain his childish response to things that he doesn't like because his emotional maturity is stunted. He didn't get to be a child. So now as an adult, he's regressing maturity wise. So he don't know how to act. He really just does not know how to act. Now, I don't know what that daddy was mentoring him to do or be, but it definitely wasn't to be a stand-up guy when you're in a marriage. These two are just hard to watch, y'all. They really are. They just do the exercises to get through it. They don't care about each other at all. They never have follow-up questions, follow-up conversation. It's just weird. 
22 days until decision day. So Claire said Cameron said that he's doing okay and she's relieved because she was so worried about him and she wanted to let him know that he has her support and it really means a lot to her to know that he's okay. In the next scene, oh Lord, they all getting together again. I hope they hold the tears and I hope they exit out that episode of Orion going back over there trying to get Lauren because I realized that that episode was supposed to come up sometime soon and we haven't seen it. So I am just hoping that they will ask that episode and spare Lauren because we don't want to see Orion, baby. We don't give up. Damn. Anywho, only two and a half men are standing because we have Brennan and we have Austin and Brennan has one foot on decision day. Baby, he can't wait to get to decision day. If he didn't fear looking crazy on television, he would say that today was his decision day. But here we are. Over on the other side, the ladies are talking and Emily is telling them that her and Brennan talk things out so now they can kind of move on. So Becca said, girl, I got to give you some props because I mean, you going through it and you still sticking in there. Emily talking about, well, I'm an optimist, girl, an optimist, an optimist or a fool because there's no way I would deal with Brennan in any capacity. You couldn't pay me. And I know they get a hefty stipend or just a stipend, whatever it is. Absolutely not. She's like, yeah, I'm an optimist and I'm just riding the wave. Well, girl, the waters are too choppy. Get off the wave get off <laughs> get off the wave just imagine looking back while you're riding the wave and hearing shark honey and run okay because there ain't no reason that you should be hanging out with Brennan meanwhile Brennan is pretending to Austin that everything's all good yeah we're doing great everything's fine oh we're great work some things out got in the jacuzzi um, sir everything's not fine back with the ladies Becca is like, yeah, I mean, who would have thought nobody would be getting any in their marriages? And we're like a month and a half in. Y'all know who Becca reminds me of? Becca reminds me of Claire from season 12. Y'all remember she wanted to have sex with Ryan so bad, but Ryan was given chastity belt. Y'all remember when Ryan would get in the bed with a full on basketball outfit on? Shorts, shirts, everything. <laughs> Baby, Ryan was not giving it up. And then later on, they did an interview and said they lied about the no sex, but I think they lied about the lying. These two are not fooling me still to this day. Okay, even though they're divorced and moved on and season 12 is in our review mirrors, Claire and Ryan lied to my face season 12 after season 12 in today's date. Moving forward. So Austin is over there telling Brennan that Becca moves a little faster than he does. Yeah, it's giving the tortoise and the hair. Okay, and the hair is pink. I'm not understanding why you moving so damn slow. Now, don't get me wrong. We have to respect men when they don't want to be in a rush. If this were a woman, we would say, oh, no, don't let anyone rush you into doing something that you're not ready to do. She just doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to extend the same grace to Austin. But what I'm trying to figure out is why you keep on bringing up that pegging. Now, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Because that's not moving slow type, type of talk. It's just not. Something in the buttermilk ain't clean. But y'all ain't heard it from me. Moving forward. Over on the other side, Claire is telling the ladies about Cameron and how she feels like they were put together for her to be there for him. And here comes the tears. I said, ooh, child, we almost made it through without somebody crying. She wants to live out her vows, but she doesn't want to hurt him like she's done. She doesn't want to hurt him any further. Ma'am, there's no way to live out your vows. You're talking about in sickness and in health till death do us part. You forgot about the death do us part? You're supposed to stay married to live out a vow? Claire, goodbye. Now, I really do hate that Claire is beating herself up the way that she is. It's very nice of her to be there for Cameron because it seems like Cameron is alone a lot. He down there in that basement with his chosen family. We don't know much about his real family. He told Claire that they were going to have this wedding so that his family could see it. But then all of a sudden his dad was sick. It's something missing. So I'm glad that she can be there for him in that way. So while they all doing all that, Michael shows up and he's telling them that he's getting married. So they're like, oh, yeah. We're going to tell her, you know, how great you are and how you've longed for this. And we're going to have your back. Now they doing all that talking when in reality, baby, she does not even know this is his second chance at romance. That is why I feel like Dr. Pepper should have told that woman, listen, this is Michael's second go round. The first bride got cold feet. And so we felt that after going back into our log that you would be the best candidate for a man like Michael. Both of you are deserving of love. You have several things in common and we feel like this could be a boost to his self-esteem and just the match that you need. Not, I don't want to tell her. 
because she's going to probably, you know, go in kind of biased and then everything would fall apart. No, Dr. Pepper, you're doing that because you don't want her to know that you guys failed and you have a failure rate of about 90%. That's really what this is about. You should have told that lady because that's not fair. You don't let her walk into something unbeknownst to her. And now all these people going to bum rush her like, oh my gosh, Michael got a second chance and you're it. And she's going to be like, what? Oh no, ma'am, honey. So Michael invited them to the wedding. Michael, what the hell you got on? <laughs> I can't ignore it no more. Michael, I like you, but what are you wearing, my dear? What is it? It looked like a thrift store threw up all over you, honey. And I like Michael, but baby, that outfit right there is a fool. Brennan. So Brennan is video chatting with his best friend, Richie, trying to get some advice. Brennan, why are you playing on this here TV? You don't want advice on how to keep things going because you don't want to keep things going. You don't want anything to do with Emily. So his friend is offering sound advice, but I feel like it's falling on deaf ears. Brennan seems like a robot to me. Very emotionless. It's, 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 you get nothing from him. So he's telling Richie, you know, Emily is the best person that I've ever met. She's amazing. I'm really hoping that the romance is going to come. Sir, what are you talking about? You are a very scary individual. When Dr. Pepper asked you for five nice things about Emily, you could not muster up five. You could only muster up three. And that was a stretch. You are playing chess on this camera. I see right through you and you ain't fooling me. Becca and Austin. So Dr. Pia is coming over and Becca wants to ask her how she can get Austin to take off that hat and take off them pants. <laughs> Baby, let's get down to it, okay? Ain't nothing to it but to do it. So Dr. Pia arrives. Hey, girl. And so she sits down. She's asking them about intimacy. So Austin is letting her know, you know, I've been a little bit slower than anticipated, but it's really all on me. It is. He says, you know, I typically just like to move slow. A couple of times, you know, we rolled around and whatnot, but we didn't go all the way. So Becca said, I'm just not used to feeling like I'm less attractive or less desirable because my past partners didn't make me feel that way. So he's like, no, 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 it's not that. I do desire you. She's like, yeah, but you're not showing it. Even though, you know, you think I am. I think you're hot. And so Dr. Peel was like, well, what's the holdup? He says that he's in his head because the spotlight is on him. Baby, I don't like who -hoo, living under your spotlight. <laughs> Baby, shout out to Jennifer Hudson. He said it's too much pressure on him. It's too much to try to make him perform. He don't want to do it. Maybe he's one of those that doesn't want to do it when he knows that the cameras are rolling. Or maybe, just maybe, he's just not that into you. And that is okay. That's why you go throughout this process, as Paige used to call it in season 12, go throughout the process to see if on decision day, you can make a go of it. And speaking of, I need to check on Nicole. Y'all remember Nicole Snooky from last season? I really need to check on Nicole and her man and see if they still going strong. I don't know why that just popped into my head. But Nicole and her man, I can't even remember his name, child. I just want to see how they doing. I'm going to report back to y'all next review. But anywho, that's neither here nor there. That's just a side note. But Austin is feeling the pressure. So Dr. Pia asked what made him pull away when they were making out? Like, why didn't you go full throttle? Like, what happened? He said again, he was in his head. So Dr. Pia says, well, you know, we're going to need to increase the foreplay. Austin was like, well, that's new for me. I'm uncomfortable just watching them. Okay. Because I know that Austin does not want to do this. I can see it, but he's saying whatever to appease Becca and Dr. Pia. He's a people pleaser. I don't know where it stems from, but I have watched Austin since that honeymoon say whatever it is that he needs to say to make Becca feel comfortable. But I don't buy for one second that he's ready to move past foreplay. Because if he wanted to, he would. You definitely don't have to be. So Dr. Pia gave them an exercise to, to do. But Austin's eyes tell a different story, honey. He ain't going to do that homework. It's going to be time to turn that homework in. Austin's going to be like, I can't do it. My dog ate it. <laughs> Man, my dog ate my homework. I ain't going to be able to do it. Michael and Chloe. So we see them getting ready for their mid-season wedding, honey. Nothing to see here. Emily and Brennan. So they're playing soccer. I mean, it seemed like they were having a good time. It seemed like they were having fun. Emily is pretty athletic. She was tearing Brennan up on that soccer field. Do you hear me? I said, get him, Em. 
So after she gets through kicking his butt, they sit down and Emily is telling him, you know, she got good at soccer with the help of her dad. And so Brennan was like, you know, I can relate. I too was bad at this, but then I got a little bit better. And yeah, I mean, I was good moving forward. So they both have soccer in common. Y'all, now I know it's been cold all over the world this week, but hell must have frozen over because these two are actually being tolerable for once. And they're having a great conversation and not just looking at each other. Because I was like, what's happening? I can't believe they're actually talking. A conversation requires you to bounce things off of each other. And oftentimes he says what he's going to say, silence. She says what she's going to say, silence. But today... They were talking to each other, Becca and Austin. So they're at the shared apartment and they get the intimacy package. Y'all know they send those packages every single season. They can take that care package down the hall, honey, because these two don't need it. They have to do an obstacle course. And the one that's leading has to reveal something intimate about themselves. So Austin is the leader and he's blindfolded Becca and she has to go throughout the apartment based on his instructions. So he reveals one intimate thing about himself. He said he likes when she talks dirty. Another thing was Becca has great boobies, even though she had to coach him on what to say. Like, are you serious? Are boobs a part of intimacy? You didn't know that? Okay. And child, nothing about this gives. Let's get it on. But he don't even know her boobs are something intimate. So we can wrap this up. Emily and Brennan. Uh Oh, Dr. Pia is back. And we all know what that means. And we know Brennan wants to run and hit that balcony and jump over it and go down to the first floor because he does not like Dr. Pia. They sit down, they start talking. Emily starts telling Dr. Pia what's been happening. And Brennan is getting pissed because he's trying to control the narrative. See, he didn't think she was going to go rogue. He was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you saying? Because he was like, yeah, everything's going great. We've been really talking. We've been getting better. Emily was like, uh, no. Okay, he ignored me and he hasn't been talking. He hasn't been doing anything that he's supposed to be doing. He's like, yeah, I mean, we've even been hugging. She said, well, us hugging was his idea. Well, baby, what she say that for? Oh, honey, she is boiling his blood. Dr. Pia said, well, the exercise wasn't to hug. So you didn't actually do the exercise. So then Brennan basically yells, cut, 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 cut. Okay, let's talk about something more positive. Okay, I don't even know why she's saying these things. I don't know what's going on. I don't even know why she's talking like that. So then Dr. Pia says, well, you're, I'm getting a lot of pushback and I'm wondering why. So she's trying to get to the bottom of it because Emily seems like she wants to say more. So then Emily says, well, you know, Brennan is very reactive off camera because he doesn't want it to be seen. And he only wants positive things to be seen on camera. And I told y'all that is scary. Why is Emily still subjecting herself to him? I would go. It reminds me of when Jose was Jose and locked Rachel out of that dang on shared apartment and had her sleeping outside in the hallway. I will never forget it. And then they showed that unseen footage of him acting a fool and cussing her out in that apartment. Like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't trust it. So Dr. Pia says, well, it feels like Emily will just say yes because you want her to say yes. She said, yeah, that's true. I feel like I have to watch how I say things. So he's upset because she's acting like she has to tiptoe around him because of the way he's going to react when in reality, they've been doing well. So Dr. Pia, I'm gonna say this to you. You need to remove Emily. I don't trust Brennan as far as I can throw him and I can't pick him up so I don't trust him because he is trying too hard to suppress the unhinged side of him and it's making him look even more unhinged. I wish he would just let loose so we could see the real him. Every time Dr. Pia comes over, Brennan has an issue. What is your problem with Dr. Pia? You had absolutely no issue with Dr. Pepper. But as soon as Dr. Pia shows up in the spot, you have a problem. Let me find out you on like a strong black woman. Okay, Orion, let me find out. This is giving blink twice if you need help type of situation. There's a reason that she is expressing herself now because she feels safe. She feels comfortable. So Dr. Pia asks Brennan, do you trust Emily? He said, you know, the trust is building. Emily said, what did I do for you not to trust me? He gonna say, well, for me to trust her, she needs to do what she says she's gonna do. She needs to be consistent. Basically, he coached her before Dr. Pia arrived and she went off script. That's what I took from it. And why on earth is Dr. Pia even entertaining him? Because now she done turned around and started making it like it's Emily's problem. Maybe she's trying to disarm him. I was like, okay, 
Dr. P, I don't know what you're doing right here because you lost me. I don't know if you're trying to disarm him or what. But this didn't make any sense to me. I mean, he does seem like a ticking time bomb, but I just didn't understand it. He wants to control how they present and that is not okay. She is her own person. She does not have to say what you feel. She needs to say what she feels. Otherwise, she's not gonna get the help that she really needs. So she starts to cry and tells him that she doesn't understand what she did to make him not trust her. And she's like, I really just don't like how things are going. He gonna say to her, I'm sad too. Neither one of, of, of us are, is getting what we wanted. Not your sad too. What are you sad about? Has she treated you this way, Brennan? Child, this is a mess. Emily needed to get that out. I don't care how, how y'all put it. She needed to release that. She's been holding so much in. And just because y'all play soccer together does not mean all is well, Brennan. Okay? You give Dateline vibes. I don't trust nothing about it. They need to do some psych evaluations on these people. Because that scene gave me so much anxiety. I was like, oh, this is just too much. Then they were playing this creepy background music. I was like, oh, the soundtrack is even scary. Dr. Pia, I feel like you failed the mission. Okay? I don't know exactly where you were going with it. Things were going well until you shifted blame on Emily. Brennan is manipulative and he gaslit this entire situation to steer it in his favor. And it worked. Becca and Austin. So Austin set up a little romance in the bedroom. And I guess they're about to cuddle on this bed of roses, honey, because they ain't going to be getting down and they ain't fooling me. So they play this game and she's asking him his favorite body part. He said, your pink hair sir she wasn't born with it <laughs> maybe it's maybelline no just kidding she was not born with that pink hair austin i'm not gonna play with you he said her pink hair her eyes her smile isn't half bad i don't know basically her head child becca asks what is your best sex move being able to have it while he wearing that hat because i simply cannot see austin breaking backs and it's just me <laughs> Austin is not getting into it, honey. So they start kissing. He pulled back, but Becca was holding that neck. And Becca had that neck, y'all. And Becca brought Austin in that hat a little bit closer. She almost flipped that hat off, but he managed to hold on to it. Becca had that hat like, you're not going anywhere except Pound Town. And that was the end of the episode. Show y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. I thought this episode was all right. Listen. We can complain or we can just push through. Hopefully the season is almost coming to an end. And yeah, then we'll get to the reunion, get to the, to the decision day and wrap this thing up. Please don't hesitate to like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.